the church is serious about the great commandment. The great commandment summarized, love God, love man. We are serious about love. We want to love people. We have something that some of the acting deacons at Ecclesia, Lance and Brittany, they're leading out in this to serve and love our community. And we call it Love Muskogee. It's like, what should we call this kind of ministry to where we're helping and loving people? Uh, what's our city called? Love Muskogee. We used to do a thing like this in Shakota when I was down there. It's called Love Shakota. Pretty much wherever it is, it works. We're seeking to love our city like Jesus loves us. Now, as I said, we love God by cherishing him and receiving all that he's given us and enjoying him and praying to him and reading the scripture and obeying him. And we love man by sharing the gospel with them, by seeing them in times of need, whatever the need may be, we seek to meet that need. However, whenever, whatever it costs, we want to do whatever we can to love people like Jesus has loved us. We're serious about that. You see it here in the early church in verses 45 and 47a. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. Verse 47, praising God and having favor with all of the people. So some people look at this and say, oh my gosh, verse 45, they're like communists. That's communism. Christianity is... ah! And then some people that are Christians go, we don't have anything to do with that Acts 2 crap. We don't want anyone to be communists. This isn't communism. It is out of response to the gospel and the Holy Spirit's empowering you to live a new life. You want to love and serve people. It says here that they were selling their possessions and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. This may help you kind of grab this. They didn't have banks back then. People didn't have a check card. People didn't just have a lot of cash on themselves. They had a horse or a cow or sheep or a chair. And that's it. They had the food that they could eat for the day. And then they had some possessions. So in response to the gospel, this early church, when they're like, there, there are people that are my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I want to help them. I want to love them. I don't have any money. Okay, I'm going to go sell a cow and I'll give them the money. Or I own this portion of land. I'm going to go sell this land. I don't really need it. I had it. But someone needs the money I could get for this more. So I'm going to go and give it to them. What this looks like nowadays is not typically just, oh, I'm going to go pick up my chair and go sell it and give the money to someone. Typically, we have money in our bank account of some kind, or we've got some money on us. And we see someone in need and we give it to them. And certainly it's not limited to that. If we don't have money and someone needs something and we have excess in something, we go, what? I can sell this to help them. But what we see them doing is doing anything and everything they can to love each other, to meet each other's needs. It says that they continue to have favor with all people. The church spread all throughout by the power of the Holy Spirit, and it was a witness to people that weren't believers in a huge way by the way that Christians loved people. There was an evil leader, I think it was like in the second century, that said Christianity has spread everywhere because these dang Christians are loving not only their poor, but even just the poor that aren't Christians. They're loving everyone. And this message keeps spreading. This guy's talking out against it. He's saying this is why it's spreading because they really love people. People see that and go, well, why are you guys doing that? And they start looking at, well, the Holy Spirit gives you a new life through Jesus. Jesus comes in, forgives you, saves you into his church and you live a new life to love him and to love people for his glory and for everyone's joy. So the church is serious about the great commandment. And don't miss this point. The greatest way you Christians can love people is sharing the gospel with them. That's the greatest way. Not because the spiritual is more important than the physical, but because the eternal is more important than the temporal. You hear me? We don't turn a blind eye to people who are in physical need, but we need to meet that and we need to know they have a bigger need than that they're hungry. They have a bigger and eternal need that they stand without Jesus as rebelling against God and just judgment will come on to them. But Jesus has lived, died and arose in the place of sinners. So we need to tell them this good news. It's finished. Come to Jesus. 
That's what they need to hear from each and every one of us. They need to be invited to, into your life in community groups or just normal life. They need to be invited to come and worship with the church, to come and hear the gospel preached. They need to be invited to all of these things, but they most of all need to be invited by your mouth, sharing the gospel with them and saying, come to Jesus. It's great. All evangelism is, I'm trying to remember who said this. I think it's either Charles Spurgeon or Martin Luther, but he says, I think it's Luther. He says, evangelism is simply one beggar telling another beggar where he can find bread. That's it. We're sinners and outside of Jesus, we are all screwed. And so we are saved and we have this great gift of the gospel and the Holy Spirit in us. And so we want to share that with other people. I'm the same as you. I didn't make some good decision. And so God loves me more. He saved me. He brought me. He opened my eyes to the gospel. And I want to share that with you so that maybe he will open your eyes to it. Cause that to come to life in you. The number number one way we love people is sharing the good news of Jesus with them. So we have things that we're serious about the great commandment. We have what's called a diaconal fund. It means like this servant fund, the office of deacon. We have a fund that a portion of the offerings that we all give to fuel the mission of the church go into this fund that are strictly set aside for if anyone in the church is in need in any way. So we've got to put this into action time after time in the last year and a half that the church has been in existence. Someone has a bill come up that they weren't expecting or someone has a flat tire and they don't have any money to fix it or the car breaks down or we had one guy that was here and his mom was about an hour away and she had lost her job and she didn't have any food. And so we go, he, we were just talking in passing. I said, we're giving you money to go. You're going to drive up there today and give her money and buy her groceries then. We are able to do that because we feel the mission of Jesus Church by giving financially back to Jesus. And we set some of it aside for that. We also set some of it aside to do side types of mission work all throughout the world. And we're able to sponsor people that are going to take the gospel different places. We also do that through, we have a fund for Love Muskogee that Lance and Brittany are leading out in, that a portion of the offerings go into that. So if you'll look in here when we're done, we have what started a storehouse. That what we're doing is we've, they've made shelves and got everything organized in here. And they're inviting people to come and give what you don't need to this storehouse. So that when people are in need and they, we come across them, we have stuff that's ready to give them. So this is like toys. This is non-perishable food. This is clothes, bedding, towels. Whatever, furniture, kitchen stuff, anything and everything that someone could possibly need, give it. We keep it here and Lance and Brittany, by the grace of God, are helping distribute that to people that are in need. That's why we do that stuff, because that's what the Bible says a church does. And that's a good way that we actively love people.